Today we're talking about getting into rust repair on your project car. Stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and we are in full swing on the Project 442. Still healing from the brain surgery. They still haven't turned the device on yet so I'm not doing a lot of welding and I can't even get my stupid, there we go, not doing a lot of welding yet. That's next Friday, a week away, so close actually less than a week away now but i want to talk to you guys about doing rust repair on a project car a lot of you guys are going to be diving into this for the first time this is my first time i have done some minor rust repair on the nova nothing to this scale i'm cutting the entire floor out of this thing i mean you're just going to see we're going to look at some of this stuff but i want to talk to you about a couple things that are going to help you along one of them is Go out there and find the experts on YouTube and watch their videos. Uh, man, there's some great content out there. And don't be afraid to watch some of the older stuff. There might be some videos that are five, six, seven years old out there. But it's somebody that knows what they're doing. And you can tell really quick if they know what they're doing because it's no nonsense. They get right down to it. They show you what to do. But on top of that, I want to talk about some of the amazing tools that I'm using to do my rust repair. Now, first and foremost, you're going to want a good air compressor. Now, I've got plenty of electric tools around the shop, wired and wireless, cordless, corded and cordless, but air tools, A, they're cheaper. I mean, a good air tool is cheaper than the comparable electric tool or cordless tool. Uh, electric tool is probably cheaper than an air tool but you're gonna end up using more of them. I've got a whole slew of them now. I've collected up over the years and I'm running them off a of 30 gallon. Now the 30 gallon, like 175 air compressor is probably the bottom end of what you're gonna need. You're not gonna get away with a pancake or something like that because mine runs almost all the time whenever I'm using tools. So keep that in mind. It may be worth spending the extra money to get a better air compressor to be able to better use your air tools than it is to go and spend money on a bunch of electric or cordless tools. You can see we're starting to cut the floors out and I've gone ahead and braced up the car. I'm leaving the car on the frame and the frame is in great condition, but I still went ahead and braced up the car. It is better to be safe than sorry because you're cutting out a structural part of the car. So if you're gonna be doing floor modifications short of just patching small sections of the floor, go ahead and build a brace out. It's not rocket science, it doesn't take a lot. Uh, you know, I went up about a foot from the floor pan and X braced it, and that gives me some room to actually get in here and work underneath everything to make sure that I can kind of get where I need to. Now, I've already laid my pans out, kind of marked everything, and I've cut all of my holes smaller. And then as I go to finish each pan, I'll go ahead and widen that thing out and get my gap set so I can butt weld in my pans. So, in this case, measure twice, cut 16 times, you know. Don't just go in there and hack your whole floor out. Get some reference points. A good reference points on A-bodies is the frame mount right here. If you know where this is on your new pants, you can start with your fronts and then make your backs to match up to that. So that's kind of what I've done on this. Now, whenever you want to separate your pans from the uh, floor supports, air chisel works like magic just bust that out because your floor supports if they're in decent condition they're going to be a lot stronger than your floor plans and that's just going to strip your floor pans out what i did was come in and cut out the center sections around the floor pans to make it easier to go in and cut my uh, floor pans off my supports so once again this is a husky this is cheap this thing i've been using left and right love it the other tool I've been using a lot is my air drill. And this is only an 1800 RPM air drill. I wish I had one that had a little more RPMs because cutting uh, spot welds out with the spot weld cutter takes too long with this thing. It works though. Electric drill or my cordless DeWalt does it a lot quicker. So keep that in mind. And while you're using a spot cutter, go ahead and dip it in some cutting oil or something like that to make sure it cuts, you know, keep the cuts uh, cool things like that it helps 
So go ahead and use cutting oil. I mean, you're gonna to have to clean this thing up anyways before you weld it back together, so. Buy tons of cutoff wheels. You're gonna go through these things like crazy, whether or not you're using a pneumatic or a cordless or an, a corded uh, angle grinder. You're gonna go through a lot of cutoff wheels whenever you're getting into a project like this. So go ahead and buy them in bulk. Buy a 50 pack if you can, buy a 100 pack. I've already gone through, I don't know, at least 10 of them, just cutting this section of floors out and working on this section right here. Which brings me to my next point. Get a spot weld chisel, it helps. You know, I've been cutting these spot welds out. If you start getting to the point where you don't know where your next spot weld is, start working your chisel in there and you'll find out where it is pretty easily. Once you clean this up though, you can generally see the depressions of where the spot welds are at. And then where, where that comes into play, Use a center punch. Center punch your spot weld, hit it a couple times, and then what I like to do is get that needle on the spot weld drill in that center punch hole and start the bit up and then slowly apply pressure. It'll keep it from walking out. Even some wonky angles and stuff like that. Where these things shoot off and break tips and stuff like that is where you just jam it in there right away. Get that bit some time to work a nice groove in there so it has something to hone in on. It'll make your life a thousand percent easier. Spot weld chisel, baby. I've been using this thing. I love this thing. You can hammer on the back side of it, cut everything out. Uh, it looks great. So getting into something like this, there's going to be more rust than you expected. Do not get downhearted whenever you open up a panel and you find out that you've got rust going all the way up there whenever you thought Literally, whenever I first started on this, I thought there was just one section down here in the corner that was rusted out. And I cut this section out because it was damaged because it had been hit and already had the panel. So I plan on cutting a panel in right here. And once I got this out, I found all kind of rust back in this area. And so now I've taken this whole panel off here and I'm developing my cut lines in here for this inner panel. Now, that being said, I'm gonna try and retain as much as the original sheet metal for the firewall side of it or the door frame side of it. Just because I have the entire panel in here doesn't mean I'm gonna use it. Another thing is, while you've got this thing open, before you seal it up, seal it up. Throw some uh, rust converter in there, rust preventative. Do whatever you can to try and seal this thing up and keep it from rusting in the future. Let's create something that lasts a long time. So that's kind of the beginning of, hey, this is how you do some of this stuff. I want you guys to realize if you're thinking about doing this, you can do it. As long as you put the time in, take your time while you're doing it, it's not that hard. Now it will get a little bit complicated whenever you got form your own patch panels and stuff like that. And I've cheated by buying basically every single panel that I can for this. And there's only a couple small spots where I'm gonna to have to make my own panels. Cost me a little more money, makes my life a lot more easier. It's a lot easier for a first timer for doing some of this stuff. But find a place like Metal Supermarket if you've got one local, go strike up a friendship with the owner. They're locally owned, they're a franchise. Talk to those guys, get an idea. I went and bought some sheet metal yesterday, bought my braces to brace the car up, stuff like that. Being able to go to a place like that, you can buy stuff a la carte, any size that you need, makes life easy. I walked in, spent a hundred bucks, and everything was within six inches of where I need it. I just measured everything out, got it six inches longer, and then cut it whenever I got here to fit. And then I bought some one inch or one foot panels, one by one panels I can cut up to build patch panels for where I don't have any uh, preformed stamped panels to weld in. So that being said, I'm gonna get back to it. I will update you with more tips and tricks as I get through this process, but I want you to know that you can do this. I've got faith in you. If I can do it, you can do it. Stick around, there's plenty more content coming on the Project 442. We've got a full suspension build, but we gotta get all of the rust knocked out first. I'm so excited to get the QA1 suspension on here. I mean, I'm, that's like the next big thing. But I wanna fix everything right the first time. So it's gonna take us a little bit longer, but it's gonna be worth it. Listen, you guys know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.